Hi, I'm Nikolai and in this video I was motivated by my students to explore different ways we can reuse recycled paper to create good quality art. Here I have a piece of paper from a sketchbook A4 size that I found in the recycle bin and I'm now going to attempt to use this and show my students how paper can be very useful. So the materials I'm going to use are all dry and used watercolor palette paints. I'm also going to use this uh, low quality sketchbook paper which was found in the recycle bin. And I have some ordinary paint brushes, HB pencil and an ordinary cloth for me to dry my paint brushes when I paint. So I'm going to first start by sketching. Uh, I'm thinking of a portrait because I love developing random uh, faces from my imagination. I'm not using any reference material. I'm finding it difficult to sketch because the paper is quite crumbled so I might need to iron it first. So that's what I'm going to do is just go and do use a press iron to flatten it out a bit. After having ironed my paper I am now and I have kind of sketched a rough idea of what I envisioned in my head. It appears to be a female portrait and now I'm just going to dive into the painting process. I usually like to start by applying light colors. The reason why is because I'm using watercolor paints and they absorb into the paper so fast. The best way to do is start extremely light tints and as I paint along gradually I will just apply darker uh, shades and tones into the surface. Now I'm noticing that the quality of paper is so bad that whenever I apply water it goes really grey and wobbles up and it's very difficult for me to tell what is colour and what isn't. However I'm also trying to imagine a source of light and as you can see here it seems to be coming from the top a right angle and based on my understanding of how light interacts on the face proportions I'm just applying color where I think it should go and as I've said earlier I'm not using any reference materials or photographs to look at I just like to invent a, a portrait and build it from my imagination based on the knowledge I've gained. So now I'm slowly starting to add darker shades using different colors from the palette and slowly as you can see I'm applying darker outlines. It looks black however it's kind of like a deep brown purple feel and I'm using it to outline my facial proportions of sketch. As soon as I start outlining the eye I can already see that it starts to look quite visually strong and I can get an idea of what the portraits changing into. I'm going to apply the same painting principle onto the lips starting with light tints and tones and gradually working over to build shades in and achieve that three-dimensional look. Some parts of the lips I want them to stay highlighted so I'm not painting over some areas and there are some parts that I want them to look deep and therefore I'm adding darker shades to create that depth and three-dimensional look. Another important thing to remember when painting lips, if the lips are slightly open where you can see teeth try not to put too much color into the teeth. Usually that makes the teeth look creepy so I'm just trying to keep it very minimal add a small amount of drop shadow where I can achieve that three-dimensional form. As I start thinking about the ears I'm aware that I want the facial proportions to be the main focus not the ears. So for the ears I'm just adding one layer of paint and a small amount of shade to show where the depth and dimension is and that's it keeping it very simple so that the viewers eye goes directly onto the eyes and nose and the lips. I've reached the point in my painting process where I'm ready to apply and lock in the areas of hair so I'm using the darkest paint I could find on the palette right by the face where the neck is 
to make it deep and it immediately brings the face forward and it looks more three-dimensional and on the top I'm going to add some deep purple and it makes that gradation look nicer because of the paper quality and I'm also using my fingernail pinky to scrape away highlights of the hair and this is another tip you can learn when using watercolors on paper is whilst the paper is wet and whilst the paint is wet you can immediately scrape areas off and lock in some highlight earlier at the painting stage rather than using acrylic on the top later. And I think this is probably it. I'm going to stop now. Sometimes it's best not to overdo it too much and the visual effect looks great and I'm pretty happy with the final look of this uh, portrait. So I hope you've learned something important and please remember that any ordinary paper can be transformed into an amazing piece of art. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe this video and help me grow my YouTube channel. Thank you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.